Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where I'm coming to you on an absolutely beautiful day here in Tokyo. Uh, you couldn't really ask for much of a better day than today. Uh, the air is crystal clear, it's not hot, it's just a little bit warm. Uh, the skies are bright blue, we have a wonderful white fluffy clouds floating overhead. It's a perfect day to be outside. Another wonderful thing about today is that the semi-season, or cicada or cicada season, is coming toward its end. I can only hear one or two of the little buggers in the trees around me instead of the thousands that were surrounding me just a few weeks ago. So it's quite a bit more quiet here than it has been recently. Uh, a great day and a great time to come out and make a video. Uh, today's video is about a really cool camera. I say that about all the cameras I do videos about. If they weren't so cool, I probably wouldn't make videos about them. Uh, but this one is uh, an especially interesting and unusual camera. As you can tell by looking at it, it's just another twin lens reflex camera. And uh, millions, uh, literally millions of these things were made in Japan back in those days. I said that uh, Japanese camera companies used almost every letter in the alphabet to name twin lens reflex cameras and there were only like um, maybe four or five letters that they weren't able to use or didn't get around to using before the 35mm format took off. Uh, this particular camera starts with a letter A and it's an Ares camera and this model is the Ares Flax Automat which was produced in around 1950 or 1951, somewhere around that time. What makes this camera interesting and unique is its lenses. Uh, this particular Aries Flex is fitted with a Nippon Kogaku Nikkor lens. And for those of you who know cameras and photography, you know that Nippon Kogaku eventually became the Nikon company, uh, otherwise known as Nikon uh, in the West. One of the engineers at the Ares Camera Company formerly worked for Nikon uh, during the war years and using his relationship with the Nippon Kogaku Company he was able to source lenses for these cameras. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately depending on your perspective, uh, Nikon wasn't able to supply a large number of lenses because they were not able to produce a large amount of high quality optical glass. Their standards for glass in those days were higher than other uh, companies and they were unable to uh, keep up with the demand. Uh, so, uh, not all these Aries Flex Automat cameras came with Nikkor lenses. A fair number came with uh, Showa Koki lenses and others came with uh, Olympus Zuiko lenses. And though these other lenses are good quality, they don't really match the Nikon lenses uh, in terms of their performance or quality. Uh, as you can tell by looking at this camera, uh, there's quite a lot of wear to the paint. It's been used a lot over the last nearly 70 years or so. But when I look at the lenses, they still look pristine. I don't see uh, any marks or scratches or haze or anything on them. Uh, they are the only thing which looks new on this particular camera. And for those of you who shoot the old Nikon cameras, especially the old rangefinders, you kind of know that the, the lenses really do hold up o over time compared to other makes. The other two versions, as I said, came with the Showa Koki lens or the Olympus Zuiko lens. Uh, the Showa Koki lenses are quite good lenses. Uh, unfortunately, the Olympus Zuiko lenses uh, are kind of hit and miss. They are good performers if you can find examples which don't have haze or, I guess, cloudy glass. Uh, but the problem with the Zuiko lenses, which I find in a lot of cameras, like uh, uh, some of the twin lens reflex cameras, uh, some of the Mamiya Flex A or the Olympus Flex cameras and many of the Mamiya 6 cameras, the Zuiko lenses get, uh, I guess, haze and cloudiness in the glass which cannot be removed. If they are clean, they are excellent lenses, but in my experience it's very hard to find one which is really clean. Uh, but that is not a problem with the Nippon Kogaku lenses which came in this particular Ares Flex. Uh, when Nikon began producing the uh, lenses for these cameras, they were quite insistent that the quality of the camera be high because they didn't want to attach their, names, uh, their name to a lens which was used in a low quality camera. Because it might be, you know, might be people, excuse me, people might think that uh, the poor images produced by the camera were produced by the lenses rather than some other problem with the camera design. So Ares, when they produced this camera, uh, kind of went the extra mile to make it a more precise instrument. Uh, when you look at the camera, it looks kind of like an ordinary twin lens reflex camera. 
Uh, but the first thing uh, you notice is the opening system for the focusing hood, which is uh, kind of locked in place with this latch on the back. If you pull back and downward on this latch, uh, the focusing hood pops open. And to uh, open the focusing loop, you have to push on the bottom of the sports finder, and that causes the focusing loop or magnifier to pop up. And the way this is designed is to kind of minimize the amount of stray light which uh, gets inside the focusing hood and allows you to focus more precisely. And when you can focus more precisely, you'll get better performance out of the lenses which are fitted to the camera. And to close the uh, focusing hood, you simply pull up on the lever and fold it down like so. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features and functions and controls and how to use the Ares Flex Automat. Once again, I'll describe the focusing hood at the top. You simply pull back on this lever, it pops open, push on the bottom of the sports finder to open the focusing loop. And if you would like to use the sports finder, simply push it all the way up until it locks underneath the focusing loop. And then you would uh, focus the camera or operate the camera by looking through the small window in the back and centering it in the large window in the front. To close everything back up, you use this little latch on the top. You push it one way to close the uh, sports finder and then the other way to close the focusing loop and then you simply push it back down until it latches into place. On the left side here we have the focusing knob and it's rather precise, feels good, nice smooth focus to these cameras and this is measured in feet rather than meters and also we have the latches which hold in place uh, the film roll and the take-up spool when you are putting film inside the camera. And kind of like other high quality TLR cameras like uh, the Yashica and uh, I guess the Mamiya, when you pull back on these and turn them they will lock open which makes it much easier to uh, put in your film or take-up spool. On the other side here, we have a really good feature on Japanese cameras and kind of scarce in those days, and that's an integrated winding and shutter charging lever. So you wind the film uh, until the next number shows up in the window on the top, and uh, it automatically charges the lever. Another really cool thing about the Ares Flex camera is that it uses a conventional shutter button which can use a standard cable release. Pretty much all the old twin lens reflex cameras I come across, the ones made in Japan, require an adapter. They have a button on the bottom with a collar around it and you remove the collar and you thread on an adapter or a special kind of cable release for use with uh, these cameras. Uh, the Ares Flex camera does away with that uh, kind of uh, uh, complication. Uh, on this side here we have the uh, shutter speed lever and this camera is fitted with a Seikosha rapid shutter which means it has a maximum speed of 1 500th of a second which is nice when nowadays you can get a higher speed film for shooting medium format. Back in the old days uh, 100 ISO film was about that. That was considered fast film in those days. And on this side of course you have the lever which opens and closes the aperture. Uh, on the bottom left here we have a flash sync socket but we don't have a shoe for mounting a flash on the camera. To use a flash with this camera you'll have to use a flash bracket or adapter which threads onto the bottom. Moving to the back of the camera we have an exposure computer. Uh, nowadays we have built-in light meters which are connected to computers which give us uh, I guess I guess multi-point uh, exposure readings and things like that. On this particular camera we just have this little list on the back and what this does is it has a list of lighting and weather conditions on the left side written in English and on the right side here we have a recommendation of apertures and shutter speeds. Uh, very simple to use and if you have no idea how to operate a uh, full manual mechanical control, mechanically controlled camera and you don't have a light meter or a smartphone app you can kind of pick up on this really easy just by looking at the back. Old Rolly Flexes and similar cameras also came with this system. What uh, kind of amazes me about this camera is this camera was made in Japan. And I come across a lot of these Japanese made cameras with this uh, system on the back, but it's always written in English. On the bottom here we have a tripod socket which is has a quarter inch uh, adapter on it, but it looks like this might be a quarter inch threaded into a three eighths inch. So some of these may come with a three eighths inch tripod adapter. To open the bottom, you push uh, the lever to the O side and you kind of pull up on that tab and you lift up and that opens the film chamber. When loading the film, 
you would put the take up spool on this side here, like so. And then you would load the film in the other side here and stretch the film over and feed it into the take up spool and wind it with the winder and just uh, like these, you kind of have to put it back in the rest position before you operate the shutter. And just keep on winding until the arrows on the paper backing of the film line up with the two red marks, which you can see on either side of here at the film chamber. Then close the door, push the latch down, and push this guy back to where it's facing forward again. And the camera is loaded, and then you simply wind it until the number one comes up in the counter window. And then you would uh, charge the shutter, or it's already charged in this case. You would set your uh, aperture and shutter speed. Then you would simply uh, focus, compose, and shoot, like so. So it operates pretty much like any other TLR camera, but with one step missing because it has an integrated winder and shutter. Another cool thing about the Ares Flex cameras is a really high quality lens cap, which is fitted with kind of this uh, thing on the felt thing on the front, which kind of seals uh, uh, the, I guess, front of the lens from getting any dust or anything inside. And there's kind of a cool locking ring around it. So you turn it and this will stay in place and it won't fall off. And you simply turn it the other way and it comes off like so. Uh, you can use bayonet two hoods or filters on these cameras uh, when you're using filters sometimes it helps to put one on the top and the bottom so you can kind of get an idea of what the camera is seeing remember if you are using filters on this camera you have to kind of adjust the exposure for the amount of light which is cut off by the filter normally if you buy a new filter uh, the box will tell you how much compensation you need to make when you are using it anyway uh, that's it for my review of the Ares Automat uh, camera. Uh, I haven't worked on this one yet, so it's still, as you can see, kind of rough and dirty, but I should have it ready for, uh, in a few days or so, and I'll have it listed on in my Etsy and eBay stores and my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com. Uh, this camera is quite nice, and I actually have the original le leather case for it, in addition to the uh, lens cap, which I almost dropped. Anyway. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos about vintage Japanese cameras in the near future. If you would like to see them, uh, please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.